Good morning, Veggie and Matt. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's remember, this was started last Monday. Pretty good. For one week. One week. Two weeks. That sounds good. That nutcracker of yours is killer, Sandy. Good morning, Chef Bezos. Good morning, everybody. What a gorgeous day. Not here. It's kind of overcast and rainy, but it's gorgeous to be alive. Boop. Gorgeous to be alive. Liquid culture farmers. We have a few. Deborah Pearl, Clean Grow. The exception to the rule, Grady Unknown, Michael Allen, Lord of Iron, Catzilla, The Waz, Zoo City Michael, Happy Dirt Dude, and Eagle for Ecology, Vegas Mandy, Melissa G, Mr. Marmars, Anthony Hunt, and Mark Zamoron, Nerd Nature, Summer Weed, and Matt. Those are the people who sent their names in so far. <clears throat> Liquid, culture, farming. Some of us call it submerged fermentation. <clears throat> so we can sound smarter, but it's really actually scientifically very accurate. Submerged fermentation. So on the, um, well, we'll talk about it here in a moment. Just share a couple more pictures, okay? Penny, you put it in the refrigerator, take it back out. You want it thick, thick, thick. Get it out of the refrigerator. This came from Herbie. That came from Herbs. Herbs is out there doing it. Oh, so Free decided he's gonna be a farmer. Free, I'm gonna put your name on the list. Free, your name's going on the farmer list. Here we go. Free sent me a picture. He started his this weekend. You can start at any time because the stuff that we're going to show is timeless, right? It doesn't have to be done exactly at the same time as everybody else. Now, this one's great. I miss Mike. I miss the big old teddy bear. MVP has got it going on with Kim. Kim and MVP. 
decided, you know what, we're not just going to do one jar, we're not doing two jars. We'll stop at 70. Okay? We're going to stop at 70. Look at all those jars Kim and Mike are doing. MVP and Mike killing the game. <clears throat> then who do we have here? This is Ronnie Real. This is Ronnie R and R Mushrooms. R and R Mushrooms. Ronnie. If you've already pressure cooked, I've noticed some people do this, and I'm not saying you, Ronnie, not by any means. But it's just a thought. <clears throat> After you have pressure cooked, <clears throat> excuse me, your uh, liquid culture media, after you've pressure cooked it, take your aluminum foil off. I've seen some people leave it on the whole culturing time. That's not the smartest move because you're not allowing as much air um, and gas escape if you had not left this on. So, and also you'll find out this is kind of an oversaid thing for pressure cooking. The truth is I have, for the last two years during my pressure cooking, I stopped even using aluminum foil covers. I used to because everybody said you're supposed to, so I did. I pressure cooked it. Then one time I'm like, oh. actually I had some guy, you're using up so much aluminum foil on the planet. And he like got all stressed out about it. So I'm like, well, let me try it without. Um, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not picking on you, r, &R. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, trust me. I know you know what you're doing. You're killing it out there. Okay? So really just the plastic lid with the filter, because that's what you want all sterilized. Okay? I don't run... Uh, aluminum foil caps anymore. But again, that's just me. Uh, everybody does it the way they're supposed to do it, the way they it works for them. Okay. So that was just, just a quick thought. Um, I made chocolates yesterday and I, she licked the bowl, Penny. You know, darn good one, you're not supposed to lick the bowl. Okay. No, thank you, r, r Thank you for letting me use your picture just as a example. I, uh, I eschew, that's a, the big, big shot word for us, ignore. I don't use aluminum foil caps anymore. Okay. Sad or wolf, I'm sorry to hear that. Here we go. Sincerely. What are these? What the heck is this? Uh, what's the heck this? What is this? Just a couple samples. We'll be getting the information out this week. With Carlotta's help, we have finalized the uh, place that we're going to get for the Mush Fest. <laughs> Brock's new apartment. I'm moving in. <laughs> Memorial weekend, okay? So this is just, um, these are just a couple of the sample pictures I yanked out. There's the view from the spot. There's the view from the spot. We'll be getting the rest of this information out this week. And then you guys are gonna wanna get a hold of Carlotta and see what it takes to get a, a bed in the, in the, in the spot. But we're going to put out all this information so you guys know. We pretty much finalized everything. We're going to finalize it today. And Carlotta, thank you. How's that look? Think we should be pulling our boats up right about here. Okay. This is Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair in Michigan. We'll be pulling our boats up somewhere around here. We'll go up there and we'll go into the house. Okay. <laughs> He's just teasing you a little, a, little, a little bit. That's all I want to do. I just like to tease you. 
Okay? Looking good? It's right next to Marine City, this particular spot that we're picked. Good morning, my friends. I'm excited. Um, Sandy's the guy that keeps track. How many days, Sandy? How many days? Jesus Christ, get off the boat, winch. <laughs> Figures. Why do we have to look out for you all the time? Well, huh? this is a super, super, super neat lake. World-class bass fishing. World-class. And then the walleye, too. But they hold bass fishermen tournaments. The second or third, they're rated as the second or third best bass lake in the United States. How many days, Sandy? <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to go hug all of you guys. I can only say this. If you're from Michigan, there isn't a place in Michigan that's a four-hour drive away. Boop, you better come on in. And we'll talk about it more when we're closer. We're not looking to make money on this thing. We want people with sleeping bags, sleeping on the floors everywhere. That's what we want, okay? We gotta have as many people here as possible. So we'll get some more information out there. 59 days, 58 days and I'll wake up. I'm, ex I'm super excited, okay? So we finalized that, thank you. We'll um, get the information out during this week so you see the addresses. Some people are gonna be smart. They're gonna get a little place right by here that costs almost nothing. We looked around the area. There's other Airbnbs in the area. $100 a night, three or four people can get together and get one themselves. So all together, we're gonna make this thing happen. <clears throat> okay. Um, mycelium, today I had planned from last week that today we would start our farming. By farming, I mean to, for our, our purposes that we'll actually um, harvest the mycelium out of the jars, keep the broth separated, and harvest the broth into a tea of some sort, a tinctury tea. Two to three of you have wrote to me over the weekend. Two to three of you wrote to me over the... Michael, thank you for looking out for me. I don't feel sick, but I don't... I believe I probably do look it. Oh, well. Um, but I feel great. Two to three or four of you wrote to me over the weekend. So I said, Pops, can you give me um, two to three more days? Because my liquid culture is not thick enough. And then some of us, like Penny Pack, Penny, take it out of the refrigerator. We're not worried about it being too thick because I promise you we're going to use it all up this week. Okay? So, um, <laughs> uh, uh, let uh, not my new plan now. My new plan. What did what's RX saying that we're seconding? Hmm? What's RX up to out there? He's such a good guy. He'll be he's generally done. There we go. You guys are talking to Chef about shrooms. Sounds good. Um, Thursday. Thursday it is. Get your gear together. Let's be. And we may run long on Thursday because we're going to have a regular part of the show and then the last half of the program and potentially running just a touch longer, we're going to start our separation extractions and separations. Okay? So we'll be doing that. Ellie, we don't really talk religion here. We just don't. Okay? There's other platforms for that. We're, we kind of just talk shrooms here. Shrooms, what we do is we laugh together, we learn together, and we love together. That's it. Who knows what um, mushroom mycelium is? Do you know what mushroom mycelium is? Thank you, Ellie. Mushroom mycelium. Akil, let's stop with the uh, Muslim stuff. We're not doing religion here. Okay? And I slip into politics accidentally once in a while and I have to catch myself. No politics either. Hey, 
I grew, I had, I spent five years in Baltimore, uh, Maryland. When I got out of my rehab, I was 30 years old. And they tell you in rehab, one of the smartest things to do is don't go back to your old uh, stomping grounds. If you're, go ahead and take a geographic, right? So I'm living in Southern California. I had a sister who lived in Maryland. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the geographic. As soon as I get out of rehab, if I go back to my old gang, I'm going to slip back into some of my old stuff. Okay. So I don't want to do that. So I hooked up, then I moved to Maryland. I got to Maryland and I started my a uh, couple of companies and that's where I went to my first um, theology college. Having said that, I probably went across the Francis Scott Key Bridge three to four times a week. Three to four times a week I would cross that bridge. I wake up this morning to see those terrible, terrible pictures. And um, my thoughts go out to the, the people that are lost. Um, and all the tragedy, there's gonna be a lot of fallout from this. Uh, what the hell was that pilot thinking? How do you run into a bridge? Great, he wasn't, it's an amazing um, photography that they caught. Um, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do a 10 second time out here just for all of the fallout, and I'm not using that word lightly, uh, bridge, fall, get it? I don't mean it that way. Um, 10 seconds, time out. Uh, special thoughts for what, you know what it's gonna be like to uh, navigate around the city of Baltimore right now? That was the major way across. Now you're gonna have to go up, over, around, down, it, uh, and it's gonna be for years. 10 second time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if any of you hadn't heard about it yet, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, mile and a half long steel structure bridge, one of the longest steel structure bridges in the world. Here it is. There's these two posts that are holding up the bridge, a cargo ship came and hit this one post and just sent the whole bridge. Yes, insane. I would not want to be the pilot. It, it was definitely an accident, B. Hendricks, for a minute there. They were thinking terrorists. Did terrorists get a hold of the bridge of the ship and drive it straight into the bridge? No, they've already figured out this quickly that it's, it's an accident. Uh, the, I hope it's mechanical. I hope something happened to one of the motors on the, on the boat and it just couldn't, it couldn't correct itself or something. I don't know. They'll be, they'll be telling us. Um, I sure wouldn't want to be the pilot or the captain of that cargo ship. And it was on its way to Sri Lanka. It loses its power in the video. Is that right, Higgs? And it's, it was on its way to Sri Lanka. I don't know if it lost power or did they just go, oh, hell no, and then they shut off the motor. We don't know. But um, Sri Lanka, there's, <laughs> I wonder where the, I wonder if anybody's asking for the tracking on those cargoes, on those um, containers. Is, is, is anybody asking for tracking? You know how much stuff isn't making it to Sri Lanka very fast? <laughs> Swingy! <laughs> Who's asking for tracking? I don't mean, I'm not, we gotta get a little laugh out of the deal. <laughs> it's gonna be forever! If you're, where's my quar? <laughs> <laughs> yes, UJ Reaction, I see you, I'm shouting you out. Okay, <laughs> where's my tracking? Oh, that's the first thing I thought of. It's like, poor guys, all those container ships, <laughs> they're not making it. I mean, all those containers, there's a lot of businesses are going, oh, no. <laughs> uh, 
tragedy. Mycelium. You think you know what it is. <laughs> Good, I love you too, Laura. You think you know what it is. What exactly is it, though? Some think mycelium is separate from the mushroom. In fact, mycelium is a key stage in the mushroom life cycle. <coughs> when we think of a mushroom, we typically think of the fruit body. The sudden appearance of a mushroom fruit body is actually the completion of a cellular event largely hidden from view. You see, it all starts with a spore. When the moisture, temperature, and nutrients are right, spores freed from the mushroom fruit body germinate into cells called hyphae. As each hypha grows and branches, it forms connections with the other hyphae to create mushroom mycelium. Here is where the magic happens. During the mushroom mycelial stage, unique compounds not found in the mushroom fruit body are produced. More compounds are created during the mycelium stage than the other phases of the mushroom life cycle. Key. In fact, the reishi mushroom mycelium stage exhibits much higher levels of gene expression than the fruit body stage. 429 protein coding genes are expressed in the mycelium stage compared to only 91 in the fruit body of reishi mushrooms. Mushroom mycelium is immunologically active. Third party testing by Natural Immune Systems Inc. on three different host defense mycelium based products showed mycelium increased innate immune cells for protection, activated white blood cells for immune strength, and regulated immune cell compounds for a balanced immune response. As the web of the mycelium grows, some parts condense and fuse to form primordia, called pinheads, or baby fruit bodies. Under optimal conditions, the transformation from spores to mycelium to primordia and fruit bodies can only happen very rapidly. Meaning the fertile mycelium often carries thousands of freshly formed young fruit bodies in its matrix. When we think of the amazing properties of mycelium, it is no wonder we at Host Defense choose to utilize the stage of the mushroom life cycle and our products to provide an optimal range of constituents to our consumers. Our mycelium-based products provide a broader bioshield of benefits to help everyone reach their healthy living goals. So, so that's Paul Stamets, obviously, and his company, Host Defense Mushrooms. Um, he's very defensive, and I don't mean defensive in a wrong way. Um, he's very, um, let's say, proactive about his belief, scientifically uh, certified, of, the, of how important mycelium is. The mycelium itself. Mycelium itself virtually has every single one of the things that we're looking for that we end up with in the fruiting body. It's just a lot harder at home for us to be able to the, be the harvester of and, and processor of because we don't have all that fancy equipment that they do. And you have to do it in huge volumes to make it worthwhile. So we have to take the long cut and we usually do and we grow the fruit. But logically speaking, and let's remember, we're all not just talking about psilocybe fruit. We're talking about some really, really important, fundamentally important fungi. Our Reese's and our cordyceps and our lion's manes and um, chaga. I've been reading and studying up on that this weekend. Um, the me medical benefits of these shrooms are amazing. Let's get out of the part that's even the magic part. That's a whole nother thing. That's really, we're just getting into the mushroom's defense mechanism there. Okay? The fruiting body's mechanism. Please don't eat me. I'm looking more for what's, what's the value, the inherent holistic value of these mushrooms that we take. And it's not even measurable at this point because Western medicine hasn't been paying attention. Eastern medicine has been doing this culturally for centuries. It's in their, it's in their diet base. Mushrooms are a kind of a unique. Mushrooms didn't even start being introduced into Western um, civilization. I shouldn't say Western civilization. Let me say American uh, cuisines until the 50s and 60s. 
The biggest thing that they started with a mushroom was a mushroom burger. Well, you're already cooking a lot of the supplements out when you put it on the burger and there's a bunch of other stuff on the burger that's not good for you. We're supposed to be sitting around eating mushrooms like they're carrots. Mushrooms are close to vegetables, but they're not a plant. But I'll tell you, they are absolutely as in necessary to our, our diet as any vegetable we could ever have. Through the rest of this week, starting tomorrow, I'm going to go through a couple of mushroom types each and tell you its benefits. We're going to figure out which mushroom is best for uh, brain uh, growth. Which one is best for um, inflammations? Which one is best for... Um, there's all kinds of things, and certain mushrooms target those areas. And we're going to get into that this week, individually. Because again, we get those benefits. Yes, we understand Ligma too. We get those benefits just here. We don't have to go out in the woods and find a turkey tail hanging on a on a log, pick it, and, and we could already be here in what? One week. One week. That's how long it took me to culture this. So, I get excited. <laughs> Do you, hey, does Pops get excited, you guys? Yeah, just a little. A better understanding of the role of mycelium in the mushroom life cycle helps inform the consumer about the benefits of that mycelium. Mushrooms are a type of fungi organism with a three-stage life cycle. Mushroom, mycelium is the primary stage of the mushroom life cycle. And it's the longest living part of the organism. It consists of a myriad intricacies of filaments that are only one cell wall thick. Remember Chitin holding them together? Despite its delicate stature, mycelium is quite formidable. It grows for months, Penny, years, potentially centuries. And it navigates through a sometimes inhospitable ecosystem. It is capable of expanding its reach through a habitat filled with millions of microbes while communicating chem chemically with its surrounding elements, devising chemical responses to whatever challenges it encounters. This stuff is like its own alien. It's out there going, okay, I got to get through the ground to go over here. It's this rocky ground here. I got a lot of, I'm going to swing around this way. I'm going to shoot out an enzyme that way. I'm going to start something going to come this way. I'm talking that tree root, this plant root over here. Let's connect them. Let's keep on growing. This is, and it's, and it's doing all of this. Through all the dirt and the microbes and everything, it's in there too, working away. Eventually, when the circumstances are favorable, mushroom mycelium generates a fruit body. That's the above surface part. It's easily identified as part of the mushroom organism. The process of producing a mushroom fruiting body requires that the mycelium maintain, listen, don't, if I, if I'm boring you, this is the important part. The process of producing a mushroom fruiting body. Anybody have fruit going on in their tent? We're talking to you. It requires that the mushroom, I'm sorry, that the mycelium maintain a highly active immune response to prevent pathogens from harming it. Well, guess what we've done? Us cut the uh, corner, go quickies, all of that. We've taken away some of the innate ability for mycelium to defend itself. 
We have weakened its own immune system just because of the way we farm it and in a small volume and just the way we do it. Every time we go near it, we give it a chance to add another pathogen. And yet those mushrooms are in there fighting it off. The most important thing that this is telling us is if we are the fruiters, the people involved in harvesting the fruit bodies, make sure you're as clean as possible at every level. Masks, lab coats, uh, gloves, anything that you can do to keep the opportunity for pathogens to get in there during the fruiting process because that's when it is the most vulnerable. Here, not so vulnerable. I almost have to want to infect it. I almost have to take the filter out, blow in there, cough in there. It's pretty well protected at this point. It's once we get, now we're starting to make our cakes. We, many of us know. You go in there and it's turning green. And you're saying it got me. The pathogens got me. Mycelium. I'm going to read one more little thing about mycelium. Yeah, our actually can blow bubbles in there. <laughs> <clears throat> the actual living organism, mycelium, presents as an intricate web of root like filaments. Mycelium is actually, wait for this, mycelium is actually the primary plant portion of the mushroom. We have to rethink everything we've ever been taught about mushrooms. We think the mushroom's this guy. We think, oh, that's the mushroom. Yes, it is, but that's the mushroom. Rethink. That's the mushroom. The fruiting body is its survival mechanism. Highly active cells that serve many important functions, mycelium, they act as immune response to fungal organisms. While spores exist to sprout mycelium and fruit bodies come and go, for reproductive purposes, mycelium presents the primary body stage of existence in the fungal organism's life cycle. Mycelium's the th thing that's gonna be underneath the soil all the time, no matter what. Every once in a while, it'll pop up some fruit bodies, but it's in there always being the primary source. I don't think we've given mycelium its due. Mycelium supports the growth of the flower, known as the fruiting body. It's usually a seasonal reaction to the environmental stimuli. Mycelium is like the mother plant or the perennial, the one in which the mother continues to live for years, while the flower, or in this case the fruiting body, just blooms occasionally and then dies. We'll cover some more of this tomorrow. And I want to also get into, um, I'm going to start talking about specific mushrooms and their specific benefits as being measured uh, medically today. Okay? Give me five people that are looking forward to that. Give me five people. And then we'll do it. And then that's tomorrow. Thursday, we're definitely going to be our starting to extract and separate on on our myceliums and our broths. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Okay, let's bust a legend, or let's bust a myth or two. And then we have to, um, I'm gonna bust a myth or two. And then we have to talk about um, doing our best. Okay. Thank you, Marcy. Black mama snakes. What color are black mama snakes? What color are black mamba snakes? Who's buried in Grant's gra grave? Who's buried in Grant's grave? Who, what color is a black mamba? 
Black Mambas get their name because the inside of their mouth is black. I really don't know what color the rest of it is. I really don't. Somebody Google it and tell us. But the idea of a Black Mamba is oh, black. Oh. I didn't know that. I always thought a Black Mamba, you'd go, oh my God, you can tell it's black. That has everything to do with scary mouth. Okay, <laughs> if they're not black, happy they played the joke on me. All of these, how about a mountain goat? All my life, I've said, oh, goat, yeah, heck yeah, mountain goats. I know what a mountain goat is, it's a goat. Like a billy goat, you know, mountain goats. They're gray brown, Satter Wolf says, with a black mouth. How about a mountain goat? Is a mountain goat a goat? Is a mountain goat a goat? <laughs> Herbie, if you see the inside of the mouth, it's too late. Is a mountain goat a goat? Google says they're light gray to brown with a lighter underside. See, I would never have known that. I'd been looking at going, that can't be a black mamba. Okay? Mountain goats are not goats. Get used to the idea. Jackie, I'm sorry if this is hurting your feelings. Mountain goats aren't goats. No, they're antelopes. They're antelopes. Saturn wants them to be gazelle. A mountain goat is not a goat, it's actually an antelope. I'm not, I'm really not satisfied with that. I want to go back to being a goat. How about this one? Jellyfish don't have eyes. Jellyfish don't have eyes, Kim. Lie. Box jellyfish have 24 eyes. They're all evenly spread around its body, and the jellyfish can move each one independently. I'm looking at you. That's complicated. That is like, which eye are you going to focus on? Mammoths went extinct in the Ice Age. Mammoths went extinct in the Ice Age. <laughs> oh, no, they didn't. No, that's a, no. No, they didn't. This one blows my mind. I wanted the last mammoth to have a, like, have a caveman trying to ride it like a bucking bronco. That's what I thought. I wanted to see, like, you know, cavey guy giving it a ride off into the prehistoric wonderland. Mammoths went extinct 4,600 years ago. They were still around when the pyramids were being built. Wow. Uh, news to me. Only humans hold funeral for their dead. So do elephants. Elephants bury their dead and they mourn the loss of other elephants. It's even common for them to suffer from depression after the loved one's death. A depressed elephant. Do any of you guys know something that might microdose help it? How about that one? Pigeons. Oh, God, pigeons. <clears throat> Growing up, my dad had pigeons. 
we had a pigeon cage in our backyard, homing pigeons. My dad would send out homing pigeons to, he had a homing pigeon group of friends. It's like a very um, cheap hobby that you could do. And we had this cage network in the backyard and the pigeons would fly in, come in and he'd go in there and he'd take the messages out from them. Pigeons. I've always, always, always been fascinated by pigeons. I love pigeons. I have a brother-in-law who really got into pigeons. He started getting in the tumblers and the, all the different kinds of pigeons. But most people were afraid of pigeons because we think pigeons are like infected with disease. Despite often being compared to rats, there is no evidence that pigeons carry any disease. I always thought they did. I was a little, a little worried. I want to get a little bit of... Pigeons are flying pigs. They're cleaner than you think. Flying pigs. <laughs> They're a lot cleaner than we gave them credit for. Pigeons carry switch blades. I didn't know that. The lion is the king of the jungle. King of the jungle, I tell you. Nah, he ain't nothing. The male lion is actually lazier and smaller than a tiger. Furthermore, lions live in the Saharan Africa and Asia. Not in the jungle. Don't go lying in the jungle on me. They don't even live in the jungle. Don't think they're all that tough. They're not even all that tough. <laughs> Octopus. Octopus. How many legs does an octopus have? How many legs does an octopus have? CCS says eight. Billy says two. I mean, uh, eight. Eight. Four says zero. Southern's going five. He's just going rando five. How many do they have? Eight, right? Nobody, octo, eight, right? Octo. Is, that's obvious, right, Herb? Turb's going, no, you're trying to fake us out, Pops. It's got to be zero. They're all arms. I'm gonna put you guys straight, Sandman. Sandman's all over it. An octopus does not have eight legs. No. It has two legs and six arms. It's six arms for eating while its two longest tentacles are its legs for pushing it forward. I don't know that. My whole life, I've given it an eight spot. My whole life. But no, the little, 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 little ones, those are not octopus legs. Those are arms. Okay, so from now on, it's a six to two on the old octopi. Okay. I'm going to do a couple more. Still a couple more. The other day we were talking about hippopotamuses being dangerous. I forget which one of you. I think it might have been Herbie. Somebody sent me a video of a hippopotamus charging a guy in a boat. This boat's like cranked up to full. He's outboard guy. He's, he's great. The hippopotamus is coming through. The, I've never seen anything so scary. Mouth open. Hippopotamus. What the? I was like, oh my God. Just one tooth on the size of the hippopotamus is bigger than this jar. Okay? Who sent me that video? Who sent me that video? Oh my God, this hippopotamus wants this. He wants to do some serious damage. Okay? So, there's a myth out there that says hippos are slow. Not true. Hippos. For the ancient one, you sent it to me? No. Who sent it to me? 
Hippos are not slow. Despite their massive size, a hippo can run up to 30 miles an hour. Fast. Woo! I didn't know this. I'm like, I'm I'm stuck with hippo the dippo. Like, yo, oh, go, mama, do, I'm a hippo, hip to dip de do de do. Hippo, hip. No! They're out there. They're long. They're scary. How about this one? We're going to do this final one, then we have to go talk about kindness. I mean, about doing our best. Hippos can't go 120 miles an hour too, too junky. Not unless they're in an airplane. Okay? <laughs> There's no way it goes 120 miles an hour. Impossible, I tell you. Okay. How about this one? Final one. I'm going to find that video. I'm going to show you guys tomorrow. This, this hippo chasing something. Okay? Ostriches. Ostriches have the strongest kick in the animal kingdom. Everyone's heard that before. JC will tell you he's in Australia. He sees them all the time. He lives next door to three of them. There's three ostriches live right by him. He's never been kicked by one. He thought the kangaroo had the hardest kick. Then someone came along and said, no, no, I think it's the, I think it's the uh, ostrich. And then someone else came along and said, it's neither of those. Without Googling, without Googling, what animal is considered to have the single strongest kick in the animal kingdom? Don't Google, but answer and I'm going to give a prize. If you don't Google, don't Google. What animal in the animal kingdom is kicking the heck out of y'all? Mules and donkeys and kangaroos and emus. A horse. Hmm. What kind of horse? Are there different kind of horses? Are there horses in Africa with stripes on them? Donkeys and horses. Mantis shrimps, elephants, pistol shrimps, and an emu. Aren't our shrimps bringing it home with the zebra? Zebra! Ye old zebra. If you look at it, you see the flank on a zebra? That whole back leg is nothing but a muscle. It's a zebra, you guys. Listen. The strongest kick in the animal kingdom comes from a zebra. I didn't know this. R&R &R did. R&R, &R. send me your address. I'm going to send you a gram of our new shroom concentrate and maybe something else in the package. I don't know. Grams, send me your address, zebra guy. Good job. Zebra, Marcy. I wouldn't have known. A zebra kick exerts 15,000 newtons of force. A newton is a measurement. A measurement of force, obviously named after Isaac Newton, right? A single kick exerts 15,000 newtons of force, which is more than enough to kill a lion. One kick, boom, lion, you're out. To put things in perspective, Mike Tyson, in his prime, could punch at around 3,500 Newtons. Pow! I'll give you 3,500 Newtons right now, pal. A zebra comes along and says, Mike, sit down. I'm going to drop a 15,000 on him. Mike Tyson, what a... What a... Maniac, I tell you, I like the guy, though. I love the guy. R&R, <laughs> uh, &R, good job. <clears throat> Are we having fun? I'm having fun. I want to do one more. I have to do one more. This is going to be another. Can't Google the answer. Do not Google the answer. Okay? Are we ready? Ostriches lay the largest eggs. We're going to tell you right up front that's a myth. What animal in the animal kingdom lays the largest egg? 
What animal? Oh, I know, Michael. I love Tyson. I love me some Tyson. I love the way he's grown. At first, I remember when he was in jail for rape. I'm like, this guy's a loser. Now he's like, he's like Pops. He changed his life. What animal lays the largest egg? Okay. What animal? And it's not the ostrich. Kim, thank you. Kim's in there giving us physics. God is real. God is real. God is real. I'm going to give it to you. You're not being specific enough, but I'm going to give it to you. God is real said it's a shark. We'll be specific and tell you a whale shark. Whale shark. But God is real, and I'm going to send you. God is real. I like that because um, I haven't sent you anything before. Okay? And then we've got R&R. &R. God is real. Says it's a shark. We know that it's a whale shark. Okay? Whale shark is bigger than an ostrich egg. A whale shark egg. Where, are, where do you find one? Where do you find one? In a bed of, a bed of seaweed somewhere? How do you do it? Penny, pe I mean, um, God is real. If you send me your address, I'm going to send you a gram of our new shroom concentrate, and I'll send you 10 microdose capsules, just like we're going to send R&R, &R. okay? Now, hang around. We're going to do one more giveaway at the end of this, uh, at the end of this thing here, but I'm going to spend about 10 minutes now. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes now. Whale sharks' eggs are not laid. They're not laid, Christian. What happens? How do they get out there? How does a whale... I'll have to look it up. Whale shark legs aren't laid. What are they... Are they planted? What do you... How do they get here? How do they get here? They are birthed inside the whale. The egg never leaves the host. Okay, this is getting freaky. They live inside... They're, I have an egg. I'm carrying an egg around with me, and it's really big. It's bigger than an ostrich. We'll talk some more about whale sharks. Maybe I'll have to spend a little more time on that. Fourth agreement. Thank you for telling us that, honestly. Christian, I didn't know that stuff. They dissected and removed the eggs, and that's how they know. Kind of makes sense, because we're if a whale shark laid an egg, how would it go back and take care of it? It's got to carry it around to take care of it, right? Yeah, it's starting to make sense. Gosh, this world's fascinating. Do you guys think about that? Ovivio parody. Do you guys think about how amazing our, our be nature? We're just talking about mushrooms. We could spend the rest of the se season on mush on whale sharks. Our <laughs> ex-wans, they're a bunch of baby Jesuses. Your best is going to change over time. We're on the fourth agreement, page 76. In the four agreements. I know I'm a mile high. What a wonderful world when we live in the wonder of it. When we're not out there destroying it, but we're trying to make it a better place. One of the ways we make a better place is by doing our best every day. Fourth agreement. Just do your best. I love this one so much because I used to be the guy, I had to set a personal record every day. I had to, if I did 40 today, I can do 41 tomorrow. And then my brain starts, because I'm a creep, I start going, okay, so that means I gotta be doing 47 by Sunday. And then you start protracting it out and they go, you know what? I'm never gonna be able to do 80 by next Friday, so forget it, I'm not doing it. Sometimes we don't even get started because we're afraid we're not going to do our best. What is our best? Our best changes every day. That's the thing I like the most about it. Days that I have, recently, more than a long time, two times in the last month, I've had a migraine headache. 
where Brock's had to do the show for us. Sometimes when I have a migraine, and it's just really not wanting to sustain a low-grade migraine, my best is going to be way different than on a day like today. And if I expect this, myself to be able to perform just as well, then I start creating unrealistic expectations of myself. Oh, let's go back to one of our previous agreements. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Laura, have a divine day. Just keep doing your best. Sometimes your best isn't close to what it was the last best, but it's today's best. In any circumstance, it doesn't matter if you're sick or you're tired. If you always do your best, there's no way you get to judge yourself. We're our worst judge. You didn't do it again, loser. There you go again. And then we start negative programming. And the next thing you know, we're on a couch with anxiety and depression, and we're not helping anybody. The ladies down at the um, old folks' home aren't seeing you on Sunday, and you're not delivering fruit to the family. And it happens fast, people. We can get into our judgmental phase, our ex. There's no reason to hate a thing that you do. You should be proud of it all, but it happens. We get there so fast because we were programmed to live there in the first place. Going back there is kind of comfortable sometimes. I didn't say it's healthy. I said it's comfortable. Some of the things that we do that aren't healthy are really comfortable. Some of the things that we do that, that are healthy aren't comfortable. They're a little hard to do. But we'll do our best. I know, Kimberly, I agree. I love his art. If you're always doing your best, you can't judge yourself. And if you don't judge yourself, there's no way you're going to be suffering from guilt. I've had people say this to me before. Well, at least I feel guilty about it. Like that's some kind of a, um, a positive. There is nothing positive about feeling guilty. First of all, whatever happened to make you feel the guilt, you were already, something's out of line. But to sit around and feel guilt means you're not working on fixing it. What's one way to never feel guilt? Be amending. Don't judge yourself in the first place, but be amending. I'll spend my time, instead of being guilty, amending for whatever it did I did that should have made a normal person feel guilty. Guilt's a waste of my time. My time's not going to be spent in guilt. My time's going to be spent in, I'm sorry, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do my best. You can't suffer from guilt if you don't judge yourself and you avoid guilt. The easiest and fastest way to avoid guilt, let's go back to step one. Be impeccable. If you're impeccable, no matter what somebody says, you know, you know, I know, you know, you know, I know. Whatever that is, I can't feel guilty for it. That's their issue. That's their situation. I, I have no guilt in this. I'm impeccable in this. There's no way you suffer from guilt and blame and self-punishment. You know what self-punishment is? A migraine for me. For me. Some it's much more chemically induced and stuff. For me, a migraine is, I'll tell you what a migraine is for me. 
because I've learned to know my body. I'm, I, I'm a physician of my own body. It means that I'm experiencing stress. That's what it means. It means my body has stress. My mind slash body has stress and I haven't managed it. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna manifest itself as a migraine and it's gonna punish me. I'm gonna experience self-punishment because I didn't manage my stress. I'm running late on something. I told somebody I'd do something. I didn't do it. I, there's something's going to trigger my stress. And then my personal form of self-punishment typically is a migraine. Other people have other forms of self-punishment. The way it'll manifest itself in you holistically. But if you're doing your best, two to three days before I got that migraine, I probably didn't do my best. I mean it. As much as I sit here and tell you guys, do your best, do your best. I don't all the time. I have those. I don't. I should, I'll give you an example. I'll give you another example on the best. I should have, quote unquote, booked our, um, Airbnb, in my mind, about 30 days ago. I put it off and I put it off and then I waited for somebody to come along and help me and then they didn't help and now it's, they. well, if they'd have only helped me and put it off and you put it, that's stressful. There's a whole bunch of people out there waiting for some information from you and you're not delivering. That's not impeccable. That's stressful. And it's minor stress. Don't get me wrong. Oh, God, I feel terrible. Not that. It's just another little thing that you're adding to the other little things. And the next thing you know, you didn't do your best. I did not do my best. We got a great place. And it's probably the best we'll ever... I know, internally, I didn't do what I told myself I was going to do. I know, free. Thank goodness for a car. Car was all over me this weekend. She goes, Pops, I'll help you. I'll help you. And then I'm like, oh, I don't need any help. I got the... Finally, I had to break down and say, you know what my best is? You know what my best is in this situation? Guess what my best was? Hey, Carlotta, can you help me? <laughs> Sometimes our best... He's asking for help. Ooh, what? <laughs> what? Sometimes our best is asking for help. I can do it all on my own. You haven't done it for 30 days. Remember these things. Had I done my best, things would have happened sooner and I wouldn't have had a migraine. <laughs> I feel guilty that I'm not... Get over it. Do your best. By always doing your best, you're going to break a big spell that you've been under. I'm gonna tell a little story. I'm gonna read this little story. No more will be done here for today. Don't, I don't wanna to pretend to you guys I always do my best, but I do wanna tell you, <laughs> I do, I do wanna use myself as an example. There was a man who wanted to transcend his suffering. So he went to a Buddhist temple to find a master to help him. He went to the master and asked, Master, if I meditate four hours a day, how long will it take me to transcend? The master looked at him and he said, hmm, if you, trans if you meditate four hours a day, perhaps you'll transcend in 10 years. Thinking he could do better, the man said, oh, master, 
What if I meditated eight hours a day? How long will it take me to transcend? The master looked at him and said, if you meditate eight hours a day, perhaps you'll transcend in 20 years. But why will it take me longer if I meditate more? The man asked. The master replied, you are not here to sacrifice your joy or your life. You are here to live and to be happy and to love. If you can do your best in two hours of meditation, but just spend eight hours instead, you're only gonna grow tired, miss the point, and you won't enjoy your life. Do your best and perhaps you will learn that no matter how long you meditate, you can live, you can love, and you can be happy. We'll do some more about that tomorrow. It's a phenomenal message right there. Phenomenal message. It isn't, our best isn't about time. Our best isn't about how much we put into it, our effort. Our best is about what's best for us. And that's being happy. And that's being filled with kindness. And that's being filled with love. And that's being impeccable. Let's do a giveaway here, a final giveaway for today. Numbers, numbers game, one through 50. Give me a number between one and 50. Whoever gets it first on my screen is gonna win a prize, okay? Here we go. Whoever's gonna, Crystal Watson's already won. It's over, it's over, it's over. Nipper, I love you too. Crystal Watson, that fast. Crystal, good job. She said two, and by golly, by two it is. Good job, Crystal Watson. Crystal Watson, you send me your address, and I'm going to send you a gram of our beautiful shroom concentrate, who's getting amazing reviews from most of you, and um, a pack of caps. So R&R, &R, God is real, and Crystal, all of who haven't won anything here in quite some time, so it's fascinating that we we're able to, I'm really glad that you guys were able to win here and we can send you guys off something and let's, let's, um, let's, let's, uh, let's share on our planet. You guys go have a beautiful day. Um, we're learning about mycelium here. We're learning about, um, all kinds of myths. We're busting myths for the rest of the week. We're going to do some more mushroom, specific mushrooms and their benefits for the rest of the week. And then starting Thursday, we'll do some extractions and separations. Okay? Guys, I love you. I mean that sincerely. Thank you for everything. Thank you for my mornings with you. And we're looking forward. 59 days or so, we're going to be hugging in person. So let's see you guys. Let me scroll you out. See you guys here tomorrow. There was a lot of people here today, you guys. I'm really, I'm just so happy. Mark Z and Pilar and Marcy. And Tiffany and Summer Wheat. And God is real. Um, God is real. You're going to send your address to the DetroitMushLab.net. That's my website. Scroll down to the bottom of the website. There's a contact point. You can contact me there with an email. Just send your address. And then I'll send you tracking that doesn't count. Okay? <laughs> Just like the container ship. Where's the tracking? Tiffany and Crystal, thank you. And Mr. Marmars and Billy D. And JC and Nipper. And Michael Brown. Hi, Mike. And Carlotta, love you. Thank you. Gasly and Glee Cleany and Mark Z. And CCS and JC and Carrie Craig. Oh, good morning, smiling Craig. Uh, Carrie. Calico Kid, how you doing, my man? Scotty. Exception, have a beautiful day. Jolie, you too. Grady RX, Southern Green, Michael Allen, Jesus Christ, Crystal Watson, God is real, we got you now, Ghastly, CCS, Pilar, Slingy, Jimmy, Herbie, Mom, where we come up, Summer Wheat, Niff, it's all fake, can I microdose the liquid, yes, Nerd Nature, Clean Grow, Jesus Christ, 5280 all day, God is real, Mr. Marmars, Carlotta, Hair Care, Michael Patterson, Sean T. Ghastly, Jeffrey Hamon, 
Mark Z, DB Boy, <coughs> Goober, <laughs> Gomer and Goober, Pilar, Vegas, have a wonderful day, dear. Jackie Meow, Kitty Stewart, CCS Cat, Zilla Cat, Meow, Zilla, DB Boy, Niffy, Satter, Pilar, Carlotta, thank you, dear. <laughs> Michael Patterson, Pops, peace. I'll see you guys here tomorrow. Be impeccable. You too, chicken butt.